I'm Ed and this is a behind the scenes tour of a matrix display uh, kit that I got from uh, Seasonal Entertainment uh, mounted onto a coral board uh, from Holiday Coral. Uh, this is a 16 by 48 pixel uh, matrix display operated off of a Raspberry Pi uh, with the uh, uh, help of software from uh, Falcon Christmas and I'll go ahead and show you uh, what this is all about. This is the firework bursts uh, running from uh, Nutcracker uh, through X lights. Uh, running on the uh, on the matrix display, so the way this is set up, this is actually three separate uh, coral boards, and so uh, you have one right here. There's the uh, there's the seam here. There's a second one, and there's another seam, and there's a third one. Um, I had David go ahead and engineer this just right, so that way the uh, at the actual seam points, the distances between the pixels were going to be uh, uh, uniform, so that way from a distance you can't even tell that it's uh, it's actually a multi multi sectional uh, board. So, and then what I did here is I used uh, just a, uh, a lattice work. Basically, it's a it's a plastic lattice uh, H, basically set up right here. That's what just what holds the uh, the coral in place. Um, basically, you know, it just sits on here. And I used to use uh, some screws, just some box uh, boxes of screws, whatever from the uh, hardware store. And some uh, nuts on the back. Uh, this is the back of the display. I'm using the uh, flat LEDs now. Um, I had David uh, go ahead and cut uh, eight millimeter uh, holes. Uh, you may want to go slightly smaller if you're going to go ahead and do something like this because the um, when we do when I actually did put these uh, these guys in here, uh, for example, um, it was having a hard time actually uh, stay, uh, keeping grip within the actual hole. Uh, one of the things I found is if I put a piece of duct tape across the back and then I push it in and then turn it slightly, it seems to grip a lot better. But if I don't have it in there, the uh, they have a tendency to fall out pretty easily. Um, with this size of a board, you definitely need to have some sort of a reinforcement structure on the back side. Um, so I have this uh, the metal framework going across the back. Um, and we're able to make this uh, kind of stick, uh, stay together so that way I can go ahead and put this up on a building or I can just have it down on the ground and uh, make this, uh, this show possible. The controller is on the opposite side. Uh, the way they, the, uh, this is all set up on the uh, this is a sand devices uh, E. Uh, 682 uh, controller uh, sitting inside this box right here and this is the uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, with a little uh, basically this operates the uh, controller here the hard drive is basically this little SD chip right here uh, so uh, you get an SD chip drop it in your PC you format it put the image on there drop it in and then start it up this is a 5 volt uh, pillow power supply so it's a minimal so you're not running a full-size computer uh, to operate your show. Instead, you're using this basically this little 10 watt little mini computer in order to be able to uh, run the entire show. This is just a little crossover cable. So the Raspberry Pi outputs the uh, um, E131 uh, out to this uh, sand, uh, sand devices pixel controller, and then everything's all set up. I have a uh, power supply that came with the kit. It's a 300 watt uh, power supply. Um, there was one dis particular disadvantage with this particular kit. It does not have a fan on the power supply. However, it is rated for being outdoors. Uh, this is this particular show is supposed to be American flag. Uh, this is supposed to be a holiday uh, 4th of July show. And one of the, my concerns was outdoors, heat, and uh, I actually had this particular sequence running solid for probably like maybe an hour, hour and a half, and the power supply started heating up. And it actually had a uh, shut off circuit, so it turned itself off um, after a while. So um, you can't run the, the full, uh, basically everything on for a long period of time with this particular type of power supply. So uh, ventilation is uh, is a bit of an issue uh, with that type, but if you're doing this for a, a holiday Christmas show, uh, it shouldn't be that big of a deal um, because you know a lot of the times during the Christmas time it's a lot cool, a lot cooler uh, outdoors, whatnot, uh, winter time. So uh, this particular show again is designed for a a, a Fourth of July uh, for something here locally in town, and I'll go ahead and show you guys the, what it looks like uh, from a distance and. Uh, at night time. Um, 
the reason why I went with the uh, seasonal entertainment was because it had the the pigtails already on here, so I wouldn't have to do any of the solder work. I could just plug it in and go, and it has the waterproof uh, connectors on, on here already. One of the problems with having a display like this, this particular size, is the uh, pigtails basically stop right here, and it basically puts the controller almost right next to uh, the display. I did ask the question to uh, Seasonal Entertainment a while back if they have uh, extensions, um, and they said that they were going to provide those. Uh, as a as an option, um, I'm not sure. It, that's probably not going to be included. It's going to be an extra ex uh, cost. But uh, have extensions to be able to go ahead and just uh, move the box a little bit further away from the rest of the display. Um, in hindsight, I did not uh, order those up. I uh, didn't think about that at the time, so I'm going to go ahead and have to extend these myself. But uh, this is one of the things to consider is if you're running a uh, a big old uh, kit like this, um, you want to make sure you have enough uh, distance between the light strings and the actual controller uh, box, so that way you can go ahead and hide this guy uh, very easily, and that way it doesn't uh, doesn't ruin the magic of the actual uh, show you're going to run. One of the really cool things about using something like a Raspberry Pi to be able to do this with the uh, Falcon Pi player is the ability to get into this guy and go ahead and control him remotely. So for example, I can go ahead and modify the settings, uh, upload the files and sequences, and I can go ahead and start the actual show remotely through uh, Wi-Fi. This is, for example is my, uh, my phone, so I can go in here and I can stop the show, change to a different uh, something else. They're going to be adding a bunch of different features and, uh, features and settings. Uh, later on for uh, master and slave operation between these uh, units as well as be able to put like a custom message up on the actual display uh, and all kinds of cool things here. The way I was able to accomplish this was inside the actual box uh, for the uh, Falcon Pi player. Um, you have your thumb drive sitting on the top, which is where your music sequences are, uh, music and sequences are going to go. But right below that, I would go ahead and put in a uh, Wi-Fi adapter and go ahead and configure it so that way it connects to the local uh, Wi-Fi. So that's how I'm able to get into it from my uh, from my iPhone here, and then the uh, obviously your uh, E131 network uh, sitting behind there. Uh, I set it up on Unicast, so that way I'd be able to isolate the uh, the traffic, be able to have more channels on the uh, Pixel controller here. But as well as I had a bit of, a bit of an issue uh, that I was worried about multicast getting onto the Wi-Fi network and bombarding the network and uh, having some issues with that. So I, I switched it all to Unicast, so that way I was able to keep. The uh, E131 uh, on the uh, proper network, and then still be able to control it from uh, my wireless devices. Okay, this whole uh, matrix is set up uh, using uh, X lights. Uh, this is the uh, the setup I'm using for the the uh, X lights um, software. Um, so I can go ahead and uh, I can do tests from here uh, directly. So basically, this matrix takes up uh, five. Uh, universes um, for, for each one. I intended on running uh, two panels uh, with this. These are the settings from the E682 controller. As you can see, I'm using uh, all four outputs on each one. I set for 2811, uh, 50 uh, pixels in length with a group size of one, and then the first one is uh, universe one, uh, ending through uh, universe two, channel 90, and then so on. Uh, go ahead and come into here, and I can go ahead and I'll just show you real quick the uh, uh, this little preview of the uh, some of the matrix uh, bursts. I can go ahead and put in here the uh, the GIF animations and whatnot. Uh, I want to go ahead and use on the display like the flag and whatnot. Um, I like the X likes because it has the Nutcracker built in, so it makes all these uh, great effects uh, custom uh, built in, and I'll have to uh, do everything manually like I got to have to do with uh, with Lightorama. And it seems to be a pretty uh, pretty nice uh, platform. Um, so from here, once once I go ahead and create the uh, desired effects, uh, I can go ahead and you know obviously uh, preview it, and I can also go ahead and convert it. So I go ahead and say uh, choose my files. Uh, there's my flag sequence, and then I just basically uh, save it as a Falcon Pi Player, uh, and then run the convert. And then from here, I can go ahead and uh, go to the uh, Falcon Pi Player, and this is the uh, this is the control uh, panel. Uh, same thing I was showing you from the uh, from the iPhone. Um, but from here I can go ahead and uh, launch whatever uh, playlists I want. I can go ahead and upload uh, the files directly. So the files are actually sitting on the, the thumb drive as well as all of the uh, setting files. Uh, so if you ever had to really uh, toy with the settings directly, you can always pull the, uh, the thumb drive uh, out uh, after you shut it down and go ahead and back up the files. Uh, for right here, this is where you actually say select files and go ahead and upload the, uh, the F sequence. Uh, files uh, directly to here and then I can go ahead and say go to my playlist and I can go ahead and build a playlist and add the uh, sequence files uh, uh, in and then I can go ahead and start them up uh, from here 
Now, as far as the, the network is concerned, um, this is the, uh, the Ethernet side uh, as well as the uh, wireless LAN side. Uh, so that way I can go ahead and make sure that the, the timing is going to be set up. I did not have the did not get the extra timing source uh, for this guy, so I have the, the wireless uh, set up. So that way it actually uh, calls out to the Wi-Fi, and uh, that's how it gets the uh, the timing done for that. So you just basically set the time zone, and it just it just figures out what time it is, and that can be viewed on the uh, status page right here. Uh, as well, you can also do the uh, the scheduler, so you can go ahead and tell it when to go. Actually, go ahead and start the, the actual sh uh, which uh, playlist to go ahead and start, and go ahead and take care of that. Basically, the output channels uh, that I'm using. This is the setup that I'm using here, so you can actually specify the Ethernet interface you're going to be sending out to, and there's my uh, the settings that I'm using for this particular uh, matrix board. This is the CAD rendering uh, from Holiday Coral of the Coral board. Uh, how they were going to go ahead and uh, align the holes. Um, this uh, crossbar right here. This is uh, uh, this is where I told them I was going to have my uh, my support uh, bar going uh, between here. The specifications uh, are as follows here. Uh, basically, I bas uh, told them I wanted to have an offset from the uh, from the edge. I was planning on having a uh, a one inch uh, frame around the outside, um, so they were going to go ahead and give me enough uh, enough wiggle room to be able to make it to where I can still uh, get the lights in there without having any problems. Um, and then the uh, specifications said it was going to be uh, three inches between uh, each LED, so um, you spaced it out as uh, 2.8 inches uh, from center to center spacing. So I had enough uh, enough slack on the back side, uh, which seemed to work out pretty well. Um, now, as far as the actual design here, uh, again, it's the way it's set up. It is um, in order because it was kind of flimsy. I had to put in the uh, little bar that sits behind here, and I just did a. Uh, um, a self-tapping uh, screw on the back side here. So um, this is the uh, that's the part of the frame that I uh, that I used. So it's just a uh, basically like a half inch uh, piece of steel that I um, that I had my dad help help me out with, and then I just have the the cable just jumping uh, up and over um, and holds it together pretty well. So that's about all there is to this.